We're at the Alternative Energy Conference 2009. Well, you've got here. We've got a uh, just one of many different technologies on display here that you guys could have come to look at. Here's a generator that runs off hydroxy. Here's uh, Spodiotti's uh, new cell design. Got separate, several different technologies, several different vendors. Okay. Okay, we got all kinds of guys with all kinds of different devices. Just give you a quick overview of the kind of stuff that's going on over here. Okay, here's another vendor with some display units. Alright, here's zero fossil fuels uh, display. He uh, did some um, fuel consumption tests using this generator. Okay. He increased the runtime about about by 30 seconds using hy hydrogen boosting. Here's EBN, EBN's display. Okay, smart scare, smart scarecrow. Earlier I did a video showed this generator running off of hydroxy alone. Here's Sar Scarecrow's uh, electrolyzer. You guys have seen this uh, cell in some of his other videos. Bubbler. Okay. Line goes down through here. Over here through this bubbler. And then right through this generator, which as you can see is running. It's running off of hydroxy only. What are we doing? Ten liters a minute? Not even. That's six. Six liters a minute. There she goes. Still, still, still a work in progress, but you know what? It runs. It runs. That's the whole point. The technology is feasible. It's viable. It's just a matter of tweaking this and tweaking that and working out the little idiosyncrasies, eh? Okay? That was powered off of this massive uh, series cell uh, setup that he's got. Over here on the far wall, you get the smack. That's me. Got the smack uh, display set up with my FEs and my new uh, my new series uh, cell design. Got the Smackzilla cell in operation here, bubbling away, making gas as you've seen in some of my other videos. There she goes. Okay, there's my new dry cell installed with zero fossil fuel PWM. Still getting my 16% on that. Okay, so it's a quick over, overview. You can see the brackets that I made up for the dry cell. Okay, my bubbler. And this time around, went ahead and put the FE unit on. Okay, so we got that going on. A couple other things I want to show you. Here's some other hydrogen boosting applications. Okay, Here's Joe's electric car. The only thing missing is an onboard generator, as you know with the uh, Corvair project, that's kind of the goal. We already started, uh, yeah, got it man, thank you. Already started uh, making the mounts for the squad unit, here it is right here, 40 amps, 4 liters a minute. Got some, oh yeah, heat lawnmower.
electric riding bike. And here's the big thing, all you naysayers, check this out. a gallon to 12 miles a gallon. 6 to 12 miles a gallon. That's a 100% increase of fuel mileage using two, basically two uh, modified smack, smack cells. Okay? This guy, he doesn't sell a thing. He's not selling boosters. He's just a truck driver who's looking to get better fuel mileage. Okay? That's what he got. This thing makes a ton of gas. What's, what's your out liter per minute? Three liter a minute. And uh, you, you went from you went from six to twelve miles per gallon. Yep. You got some zero fossil fuel PWMs. This is based on zero's design. Right on. I uh, you guys show saw the video earlier of this plasma spark system. That's awesome. So that water vapor is getting, this is a Venturi. The water vapor is being picked up through here, through the Venturi, and then gets gotcha. sparked at the exit. Gotcha. For somebody who doesn't know what all this is all about, what, what's the way to know? Well, this is a distributor out of your car. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and that's a coil. So what we're doing is, we're taking eight tubes from the wall. We're taking the hot side of the AC and hooking it to the ground. That ground is the back side of your spark plug or the outside that screws into your block. You take the AC positive, run it right to your block. You have to run some other things with it, but that's where the positive side of the AC goes. The negative side goes to the high voltage lead on the DC side of the coil. So you got DC coming in, I'll hook it up on the spark plug so it's easier to see it there. This is your high voltage DC. This is what you have on your phone. This is the negative of your AC. And then ground is hot. This is my ground, or well, yeah, this is the ground going through the positive DC. The ground leg is the one that has all the circuitry on it but the hot goes directly to ground. So you see this red wire right here? Okay, you're telling me a lot of how. But the, the okay, well what, now, what, now what we, we get to, to the what, meat and okay. What do we want to do? Now that we understand it, we've got two different power sources, right? That's called a dipole. Dipole is having a pole here, a pole here. They're two positive, and they combine. They can't touch. If they touch, that creates continuity.
so we have that going on. Here's Jake cell. Jake's the guy that got the scooter running on hydroxy alone. He's got his videos posted on YouTube. There's his cell. This is what's going okay. on at the Alternative Energy Conference 2009. All the things that you guys could be seeing right now. Um, for those naysayers and those people that believe that these technologies don't work, where are you? Where were you? Where were you today when these, d these um, technologies and devices were put on display, including my own designs? including my Smack Booster designs and my vehicle sitting out here in, in the field, um, you know, r ready for anybody to look at and, and to do tests on. It's sitting right there. All these technologies are right there uh, for the discussion. So, you know, um, the link was posted on my website. You know, um, this, is, this is a forum, uh, this is an, an arena that where these technologies can be discussed and, uh, you know, p p questions can be answered in person. I've, uh, you know, I've shaken shake hands with a lot of these people, met them, you know, face to face, had discussions with them. I mean, if, if you're questionable about these technologies, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be coming to these events and you need to be checking out what's going on and, and you know, uh, witnessing some of, these, some of these devices in action. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, we can all sit here and talk and argue, but when it comes down to you know, the brass tacks, you need to show up, you need to be here, and you need to see these devices in action, alright? So hey, smack at the Alternative Energy Conference 2009, we're having a great time here, we're discussing all kinds of different technologies, and we're doing demonstrations, uh, we're, we're welding with hydroxy, um, you know, we're blowing up bubbles, uh, we're running Bendini, Bendini wheel. Alright, you're looking at a Bendini device that has been running all night long. Uh, we had uh, the event started yesterday morning, and uh, it got started up yesterday, and we all went home, and we left this thing running at the mill. And uh, I came back this morning, and it's still turning. Nobody's messed with it. It's been running all night long, okay? Here's a good look at it. Battery. I'm not quite sure what this guy is right here. I'm not an expert on the device. A lot of you guys watching this, you know exactly what you're looking at. Okay, so that's the setup. But what I do know, what I am good at, is understanding battery voltage. Okay, help me out. So I grab my voltmeter. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll put the uh, leads across the terminals. Mm -hmm. Twelve volts all night long. Okay. Now let's check the other battery that's hooked up. See, you see how these batteries are hooked up. Wires come down, come into this interface box. Um, and then there's another battery here, okay? So let's check the voltage on this battery. So put your leads on that battery. Hold them right there. I'll pan over to the... Got it? 12.17 mm -hmm. volts. Running all night long. Somebody should have drained something. So, I mean, just as, you know, I'm coming to this as a layman. And just from a layman's point of view, um, I see two batteries, and they're both fully charged, and this thing has been running all night long. Okay, if this wasn't an over-unity, one of these batteries should be draining, and I'm not seeing it. Also, I'm hardly seeing any current. I turned my amp probe on. There's almost next to no current whatsoever. So I don't know exactly what's going on here. All I know is that this is something. And I'm well, here's here's the smack vision. Okay, I'm looking at this. <clears throat> All right, and a lot of you guys are on the same page. Okay, times ten, as tall as a house, enclosed in some kind of a building, powering like a whole town. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. This is this is just a little toy, but I think the bigger version of it could be something real, very impactful. I'm thinking you could power a house off of this thing. I mean, just the fact that we've got motion, maybe you could tap off the motion of the wheel and, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, look at this thing and picture it big. All right, so that's the deal. This is we're down. playing with plasma uh, spark ignitions. All right, so that's what's going down. What's up, Smack fans? All right, today we're going to talk about something a little different. It's kind of on topic. Uh, but we're getting a little bit off the mainstream hydroxy uh, discussions. 
a lot of you uh, who are familiar with alternative energies and have been studying these technologies uh, like I have recognize what this is. It's a Tesla turbine designed by Tesla himself and for those of you who are researching alternative energies you know that Tesla was one of the greatest minds of recent times. He was an incredible innovator and inventor. He helped develop alternating current power distribution technology. Um, he worked on devices like uh, this Tesla turbine, uh, radiant energy devices. He was into all kinds of things. So um, I f was particularly attracted to this technology for the main reason that I think that this type of turbine can be utilized with hydroxy technologies uh, to provide new forms of ener electrical energy versus our you know, petroleum and coal power plants that we have now. So um, what I want to do is I want to try run some experiments and try to incorporate hydroxy technologies with uh, turbine technologies because turbines are extremely efficient, uh, much more efficient than conventional reciprocating internal combustion engines. You watch my other videos, you know how I feel about those. So, But this is a much more efficient design. Um, according to the research that I've done, a properly built Tesla turbine is about 90% efficient. One of the reasons why these turbines are so efficient, this particular design, is because almost all of the kinetic okay, and potential energy um, within the medium that's being introduced into the chamber is being converted to rotational energy, which can be converted uh, to a shaft to do work. Okay, now with a conventional turbine, most a lot of turbines, at least the ones that I was familiar with, like a steam turbine, have these kind of veins. Right, just say this is a cross section of a rotor, and right here you have uh, the veins which convert the static or the pressure energy and the kinetic, which is the moving or dynamic energy of the steam, into rotational energy. So you have chamber pressure, and then you have an exhaust uh, pressure, and there, there first of all, there needs to be a significant difference in pressure between these two to get any real work out of the system and also included with that is you need some velocity the, the medium that goes through uh, these veins needs to have kinetic and potential energy uh, to extract as much energy as possible to convert to work so what you have here you can see you have an angle of incidence with this vein with the moving medium that's going through the uh, turbine chamber okay and you can see that this angle here, it's not really a 90 degree angle, so you've got some deflection of forces. Um, you've got a, um, a rotational force and you've got an axial force. So the forces are, are um, split up and you actually, if you do vector, you're going to have a force that's not necessarily completely perpendicular to the resultant force with the veins, which is why they're kind of curved and you know there's a lot of design and engineering that goes in the shape of these veins. Okay, and it's pretty efficient and it really takes a lot of the energy of the Q of the steam. Uh, if you're talking steam, it, it really makes maximum use of the steam. Now, versus the Tesla design, which doesn't have any veins, it, first of all, it makes it a little easier to construct. As you can see, there's, I mean, basically you have, this is, these are hard drive platters, uh, which a lot of guys are using, okay? with the holes drilled through the centers and here you have four exhaust ports an inlet port so basically uh, the medium that gets injected steam air gas whatever it is injected into the chamber at an angle and spirals around the chamber and and uh, exhaust through these four ports and as it spirals as it tornadoes around okay it grabs a hold now all mediums non-solid mediums have a viscosity liquid and gas so because there's viscosity, um, when the medium is in motion, it tends to want to adhere to whatever surfaces that it's traveling through or over or across and drag those surfaces with them. Now, of course, if it's a pipe or something that's um, at a standstill, uh, what you have is resistance to fluid motion. But in this case, these discs, okay, they're not static. They're able to rotate on bearings. So... As the medium flows across these uh, discs and the imperfections that they are caused by drilling holes, okay, these are edges. These are these are edges in which uh, the medium tends to grab because it's viscous and drag the disc along into a rotational manner. So you have um, the velocity of the medium, the velocity of air or steam, and the velocity of the disc, and 
um, physics, okay, tries to make, because of, of the viscosity, tries to make the velocity of the medium going across the disc and the velocity of the disc to be equal, okay? Where in this case, the rotational velocity of the rotor doesn't necessarily equal velocity of the medium going through. So this is, these attempt to match. And because of the viscous nature, you'd be amazed how much force can actually be exerted as a resultant of this frictional drag of the medium going across the discs. So what you have is a simple, easy to build design which is super, super efficient. According to Tesla, he was stated as saying that with these, uh, typical with these devices, you get 10 horsepower for every pound, which is a co pretty good ratio. So, you know, a, a 10 pound unit's got 100 horsepower. I mean, that's unheard of. That's amazing. So, basically, what I have here is a very simple prototype. Um, I have some uh, compressed air here and uh, I have it uh, set at 120 psi, and the thought is is that you can use hydroxy to boil water to create steam, or you can pulse hydroxy, pulse ignite hydroxy through this system, and actually burn it like a torch through you know nozzles right here, and actually get this thing to spin. Estimating, I don't have an RPM counter, but just you can hear that bearing by the way. But just guesstimating, probably reaches between 10 and 15,000 RPM in just a few seconds, which is it's absolutely unheard of um, you know, to reach an RPM that quickly um, with just 120 pounds of air, air. It's you know pretty efficient. So the thought is is to use the hyd hydroxy technologies to convert. Uh, that the heat of, of the combustion and the, the power of the explosion into some mechanical energy that does work. So that's what's going on at Smackland. We're going to be playing around with that, so stay tuned for more updates. All right, all right what I have here is my, uh, it's a uh, custom setup here, Not, nothing really fancy, but uh, this is uh, how I keep it shaped during the winter. You know, we're kind of we're kind of locked up here, uh, up here in the northeast. It's freezing cold. I like to get out and exercise, but this time of year, there's lots of snow, and it's really hard to kind of get out there and keep yourself in shape. So what I did is I took my mountain bike, <clears throat> and I set it up on this stationary bike stand, okay? And this is something that you can get at uh, a lot of fitness shops. Um, it's, it's called a mag trainer. Fairly simple. Um uses a magnetic resistance, of this this wheel right here. Uh, to provide some resistance against uh, against the drivetrain of the bike, okay? So basically what I've done, um, and I mentioned this in one of my previous videos where I was talking about heating with wood and alternative ways of, uh, you know, saving energy and whatnot. So <clears throat> as you can see, I fabricated a simple uh, GM alternator uh, bracket onto the uh, existing uh, mag trainer device here. I just... I just welded, you know, nothing fancy, just welded a little, a little bracket, went to the parts store, bought this, uh, this alternator arm, you can get it at any, uh, any parts store, okay, uh, you know, AutoZone or whatever, okay, just some simple, uh, welding and some tapping and drilling, okay, <clears throat> then I ran a small, uh, lawnmower belt, uh, and I welded a pulley onto the end of this magnetic wheel right here, okay, so basically what we have is a simple pulley mechanism, um, I don't know what the ratio, the uh, turn ratio from from the pedals uh, to to the uh, armature. I don't know what the ratio is, but uh, it's enough to get it spinning. Okay, so as you can see, pretty slow motion gets you a pretty good RPM. Okay, so I'm I'm able to pump out uh, uh, easily 12 volts, 13 volts with this. Okay, so. Um, I have here a 10 gauge wire. I've got a quick disconnect right here to the back of the alternator. I've converted it to a single wire. Okay, so I have battery ground, battery positive, and then I've got a jumper. Um, so that at about 1300 RPM, I think it is, 
um, the alternator kicks on and starts uh, pumping juice um, right to what I have over here underneath my entertainment center. Lighting isn't all that great here, so uh, I don't know how well it's going to show up. But I'm what I've got here is a 12-volt marine battery, okay? And I've got a 1,300-watt uh, um, inverter, okay? So basic, easy setup. The inverter is plugged into this power strip right here, okay? And in this power strip, I, I've got all of my entertainment stuff hooked up. I, you know, I got my stereo and my TV and my VCR and stuff all hooked up. Okay, so basically uh, what it amounts to is that off of a full charge of this uh, marine battery that I've got under here, okay, um, I can probably, uh, at medium volume, I can, I've can i watched about six hours uh, worth of TV off of it before it starts to drop down to a voltage such that the TV starts flickering out. So for a full charge, uh, six hours, and then I got to sit back down on the bike and recharge. Obviously, I can watch while I'm while I'm exercising and run off the battery. So to get a full charge back up into the system, um, well, I, I'll ride a half an hour at a time, and it takes about a week, maybe a little bit longer, for a full charge. So I mean, you don't get a lot of entertainment for your work, you know, unless you want to sit here and, and pedal all day long. But that's not really the point. Um, the point is to get exercise and also to try to do something useful with the work that I'm doing instead of just spinning here moving electrons around. Um, I figured I'd put those electrons to work to charge a battery. Well, six hours per charge takes a little over a week to ch charge it fully. It's zero carbon emissions. It's completely clean, free energy. And obviously since I've got the inverter and the battery hooked up, um, if I chose Okay, I could run um, solar panels to it. Uh, I could want to run a wind turbine, uh, stuff like that to it. Uh, for right now, though, kind of something I'm fooling around with. It's really simple. But I guess the point of me showing this to you is I, I, I guess I kind of want to uh, inspire people, hopefully, to try to think of other ways of uh, using energy. You, we do a lot of work, a, waste, a lot of wasted work. Rather than uh, sitting there running on a, a treadmill, actually consuming electricity, you know, there's ways that you can stay in shape and actually do some constructive work. And granted, it's uh, you don't really get a whole lot out of it. You know, six hours for a week's worth of ha uh, pedaling, but half hour increments, it, it's not really a great return. Um, so if you're doing it just to charge batteries, have fun. I'm doing this for the exercise too. So I don't really care if it takes me a week to recharge the battery because during that week I'm still getting my half hour of cardio. In. So uh, and then I get to feel a little bit good about doing something about finding new sources of energy to uh, maintain the kind of lifestyle I like. I, I want to be able to watch my TV and watch movies and stuff. So if I can do it by uh, making a little sweat once a week, that's fine. Well, this is just one way. Some of you might have. Uh, Bodies of running water, you might have a stream or a river, you might live on really windy property. I got a lot of wind here. If you're in the southwest, maybe you got a ton of sun. You know, these are just ways that you can apply your knowledge and your creativity to make a difference, try to improve on things. Real simple, if you got welding skills and then some wiring skills, and I invested on all this here, it was about ninety bucks, sixty dollars for the alternator. And the battery is about ninety dollars. The inverter I think was a hundred and fifty off of eBay. Most everybody has a bike, but if you don't, you know, here's a three hundred dollar bike. So the costs get up there, but the benefits are I get to stay in shape. Stuff doesn't break down very often, so I mean it's pretty much a one time investment. So you know, these are ways that we as individuals can instigate a large scale change by taking simple actions within our daily lives. Um if everybody does stuff not exactly this, but if everybody does stuff like this, with this mindset, you add up those small fractional changes, then it ends up being a huge, gigantic delta in change. All right? So uh, that's what's going on at Smackland. Um, working on some new cell designs, too. So uh, I'll keep you all updated. All right? So happy testing, everybody.